Hey guys, welcome to this MF Corner special. I'm Pavitra and today we're going to talk about the largest large and mid-cap equity fund in the Indian mutual fund industry. I'm talking about the Mary Asset Emerging Blue Chip Fund which is now accepting increased investments. So the house has decided to allow fresh investments via the SIP mode worth a maximum of 25,000 per month versus the earlier 2,500 limit. This, remember this is for fresh investments, right? Now some background in order to put a check on capacity, the fund house had suspended lump sum investments in the scheme in October of 2016, that time the corpus was just around 3,000 crore rupees and had restricted fresh re uh, registrations via the SIP mode as well to 2,500 per month in November of 2020. This fund has done exceptionally well and with the current AUM, Miri Asset Emerging Blue Chip Fund is the largest and perhaps the most popular scheme in this category as well. So Swarup Mahanti, Chief Executive Officer at Miri Asset Investment Managers joins me now. Swarup, always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you very much for joining me on this episode. And my first question is that, you know, I've seen over the past few months, years, so many requests asking for you to increase this amount to let people invest more. You've finally done it. What do you think has changed so materially and how do you feel comfortable now? Now, Pavitra, first of all, thank you so much for having me on your show and your kind words towards the fund. Yes, the Emerging Blue Chip has remained a special fund for us and the whole intention is to keep it that way. Uh, you know, with the strengthening of, my, say, the macro environment, we've also witnessed a significant growth in the capital markets. Particularly, the mid-cap space has witnessed significant changes over the past few years. Our decision to modify the SIP subscription, which you just discussed right now, in the scheme has also been based on multiple factors, say like the growth in market cap and liquidity, increase in aggregate profit pool, more diverse universe with listing of new businesses and consolidation in the mid-cap space. In this period, 45 new companies got listed in the mid-cap space across financials, fintechs, e-com, discretionary, real estate, capital goods, etc. Over the past few years, many of these mid-cap companies, uh, Pavitra, are now much larger and leaders in their respective categories, like say building, material, footwear, EMS, industrials, you name it. Of course, there was a constant feedback and we felt given the above data points, we could provide some more room to the fund uh, and to investors. And hence, we decided to bring back the uh, ECAP to 25,000 per pan per month. Yes, as you rightly pointed out, this is for fresh inflows. All right, uh, so you've listened to the investors and you've increased this amount. Swarup, the next request is to increase the lump sum uh, limit as well and to open that up. I know that you still don't have that open. How should we read this? Is this still, you know, a little bit of caution on Mireille's part or do you think, uh, do you see that happening in the near future? That's uh, one as well. And what would have to change for you to allow this to happen? Yeah, this is a good question, Pavitra. See, while we have increased these limits, we have to keep in mind the existing investor's interest. Mm -hmm. That is supreme at all point of time. You know, before we decide uh, anything on, on any further course of action, that is prime in our mind. So we believe SIP is a very uh, nice investment tool through which one can invest systematically. And, and the merits of SIP is now known to everybody. So the fund has been, you know, receiving healthy inflows and hence we've kept the SIP capped at 25,000. Now, if you see, uh, like you rightly said, when we closed the fund at two th in 2016, the AUM was just around a, a little sh lesser than 3,000. Today, it's around 28, 29,000. So uh, to keep in mind the existing investors, we will take a graded approach. Yes, we at certain intervals, we'll come back and reevaluate it. But at this moment, we felt it was uh, right to increase it to 25,000. Uh, and then we'll talk about lump sum a little later, maybe some point of time. If if, if the fund, uh, you know, if the market increases and, and there is scope, we will definitely look at it. All right. For now, we will take this with both hands. But uh, Swaroop, you know, the composition is around 50% in large caps, around 35% in mid caps and a smaller chunk in small caps. Do you think this kind of split is likely to hold for some time? Is there any talk to uh, alter that? Yeah, Pavitra, you know, over the last few years, the fund's large cap allocation has been around 50 to 60 percent, while the mid and small cap allocations have been around 35 to 40 percent. And then the small cap, you know, that's the mid cap and the mid cap and the small cap has been between 5 and 10 percent respectively. As per the category conditions, we have to maintain a minimum of 35% in large cap and 35% in mid cap. Mm. 
See, the rest of the allocations are done basis liquidity in the market cap segments. AUM of the fund always is a consideration, let me tell you. And finally, the fund manager discretion and comfort based on the opportunities available. Uh, the fund's market cap allocation in future will always depend on and these three liquidity of market cap, AUM of the fund, and finally, the allocation depends on the fund manager's discretion. At this moment, we feel this is the right, right set of combination for the AUM. Okay, uh, just out of cu uh, curiosity, Swaroop, what is the cash position right now and uh, what is the highest that it has ever gone to? Uh, we at Mira Asset has always a fully invested fund. We believe this as asset allocation always happens at the advisor, distributor or at the investor level. Once they give us money to buy an asset class, we will buy the asset class. So we've always believed that fund managers will remain invested across time periods. And we have never used cash as a deployment strategy. Historically, the fund's cash allocation has been around 4 to 5% most of the times, you know, that's that's the max. In the few months, uh, sometimes the fund's cash allocation has gone as high as 10% if we ignore the initial few months of the scheme launch. That's when it was a little high. Post that, it's been a fully invested fund. But having mentioned that such instances were far and few, in fact, the fund's cash allocation has never exceeded 5% over the last five years. And it will remain like that. Okay, that is on the cash position. Let's talk about it from an investor standpoint as well. Who do you think this fund is well suited to? Because this is not something that you would get into for a short term, right? So do you, and what is the sure. kind of time horizon that an investor should potentially look at if they are buying into this fund? See, I think, you know, the large and mid-cap category is one of the most beautiful categories that we have in our industry. As per the categories, conditions, we have to maintain a minimum of 35% in large and 35% in mid. That gives a very good combination. India's growth story is hinged on market leaders and companies which emerge as challengers to these leaders. This fund allows the fund manager to find such companies in both the uh, market cap segments. So I would say it's, it's, a, uh, it's a fund which was open to investors. Uh, with risk appetite slightly higher than there is uh, the large cap or the multi cap uh, uh, or the flexi cap category, uh, but with the way large caps have been beha have been behaving, uh, I would say some amount of allocation from from the core portfolio can start going to the large and mid cap uh, segment, looking at where India is positioned for the next ten years. Okay, and uh, also, you know, considering the fact that the mid-cap funds, small-cap funds have already run up so much and I've been talking to fund managers and so many tell me that, you know, there's just, there's nowhere to put the money now. We don't know where to invest uh, this kind of cash that's coming in. So, Swaroop, do you think this category will get a lot more in terms of inflows? I'm not talking about just your fund, but uh, overall this category. I agree with you as a category, and that's what we've been discussing in the last question also. See, basically, when one visits, this is a theory, when one visits the ATM, there should be a requirement. When there is a requirement of cash, immediate liquidity should be there. These are challenges which are there with fund managers also, that, you know, whenever they want to sell the stock, they should be able to sell it. And that's, that's what is a big question when you start managing a larger portfolio. Portfolio building processes is very similar and, and the fund manager has to take care of the liquidity before, de as you rightly say, said, we also feel that the small cap space is now heated and one of the reasons uh, we launched the multi cap instead of a small cap was, was to take a slightly graded approach towards, towards the small cap category. So we believe the large and mid cap and the flexi cap is a good space for investors to be at this moment. That's our house view instead of, you know, going down the smaller cap category at this moment. All right, so Rup, we're going to wind it down on that note. Thank you very much as always for joining me and taking us through, of course, the Mirai Asset uh, Blue Chip Fund, the Emerging Blue Chip Fund, which is now, by the way, open for fresh investments via the SIP mode and also this category overall. So as always, great having you on the show. I hope that helps our viewers and anyone who's potentially looking at getting into this fund. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back very soon with lots more on the mutual fund space.